आज भारत ने पेट्रोल में 10 प्रतिशत इथेनॉल ब्लेंडिंग के लक्ष्य को प्राप्त कर लिया है आपको ये जानकर भी गर्व की अनुभूति होगी कि भारत इस लक्ष्य पर तय समय से पांच महीने पहले पहुंच गया है As Prime Minister stated, India indeed achieved the target of blending 10% ethanol in petrol five months ahead of the schedule. The journey that started in 2015 with only 1.5% ethanol blending has today reached 10%, and there is still a road ahead for achieving 20% of blending targets. The success of this belongs to the government and their policy interventions, but also to the scientists, farmers, and the technology that finally worked in a concerted manner to minimize India's dependence on fossil fuels. One such company, Microbyte, has come up with a game-changing technology that would be highly beneficial for the ethanol sector. This Hyderabad-based bioethanol startup has developed a disruptive technology for inline sterilization of liquid raw materials. PVNS team reached out to the founder of Microbyte, Mr. Praveen Gorakavi, who is also an accomplished Indian scientist, to understand the significance of this technology. So, Microbyte is. Uh, ethanol based startup and uh, that has like uh, developed to uh, a disruptive technology for inline sterilization so when we talk in in in, in technical terms inline sterilization technologies it gets a little bit uh, tedious for people to understand and especially in regards with ethanol which is right now um they, it's it's on peak and it's a biofuel of the future So, can you walk us through what is the significance of this technology and how it will shape how we see ethanol and how it will hold significance, particularly in that industry? Firstly, uh, thank you, Thanvi, for your kind words in the action. Um, so, talking about the technology, uh, yes, you have rightly mentioned that ethanol is on the right path. in fact the country is on the right path in adopting ethanol as an alternate fuel alongside the uh, petroleum based gasoline um uh, talking about the technology that we recently developed it's about the sterilization so most of the companies uh, which produce ethanol use a raw material which are decomposable obviously ethanol is produced by decomposing the uh, raw materials into ethanol right so um conventional machineries or conventional storage systems are simple tanks which store this material for longer longer time and when it comes to applications of uh, molasses which is a by product from the sugar mills into ethanol molasses is is extracted from the sugar mills as i said it's from the sugar uh, mills so sugar being a kind of seasonal crop it is only available for few days in a year so uh, the general tendency is people or companies procure huge quantities of molasses when it is a season because the availability is high and the costs are low and they store it across the year so that they can keep producing ethanol throughout the year now what happens is when they are stored in a conventional systems there is a drop in the sugar levels of it which means that it keeps depleting in the quality Uh, the molasses or any decomposable raw materials they decompose by natural enzymes which are present during its crushing or during any contaminations before and that almost accounts to almost 5% to 10% of the raw material itself so in in common words if i want to say the same thing if you look into a storage tank which is having molasses for more than 3 weeks or 4 weeks you see a froth building on the top of the layer a froth and some kind of you know bacterial contaminations on the top side that is all a loss it accounts to more than 5% of raw materials now we developed a sterilization technology which is nothing but you just kind of eliminate the unwanted microorganisms in the raw material and that too when i say in line i am not taking out special time to sterilize them but if a tanker comes in and the tanker unloads the molasses into the storage tank naturally we will set up some kind of pipeline system right for the material to go so we developed a sterilizing device 
which is connected to the pipeline itself so while the liquid is flowing through the pipeline it gets sterilized so there is no requirement for a separate machinery for that or a special time for that sterilization so while unloading and loading of the material itself you remove or you eliminate the bacterial and viral contaminations and also unwanted natural enzymes which are there in the molasses by virtue of which we can save or we can store molasses for a longer duration of time without losing the raw material cont uh, contents which what we call as a trs total uh, system uh, sugar levels uh, in the system or total fermentable sugars we are not losing that content we are able to retain that for a longer duration this would help the industries both ethanol and pharmaceutical industries from losing their raw materials for unwanted contamination that accounts to almost 3 to 5% of their margins or their revenues which is significantly high because this is a kind of industry which operates on a smaller profitability smaller margin of profitability and the moment when we say we are adding 3 to 5% on the raw material costs it's it's a big thing for the industry when innovation comes there's always a gap that you observe like you have always mentioned that you observe certain gap and hence you reach to that uh, particular point where you want to innovate something so uh, what is the motivation behind ethanol basically in ethanol industry where was that point when you noticed that okay such disruptive technology is to be is to has to come in line and it will lead to so and so benefits so how is that bridge is connected with you so if you see right now uh, ethanol industry is a very capital intensive uh, industry so for any small time player to invest or to set up a ethanol plant it is not really that feasible in industry terms if i have to say any company over and above 40 klpd which is like 40 kiloliters per day it is only these companies that could sustain because of the profitability issues um anything below 40 are on a on a kind of economical or financial stress at this moment of time so uh this is a big problem basically because you know if you are only allowing the big time players again let me also remind you one more thing that to set up a 40 klpd it requires at least 60 crores to 100 crores of investment which is not a small amount we wanted to add a lot of small time people into the mainstream supply chain we have observed that a small sugar mill let us say which is producing around 25000 to 40000 tons of molasses per year it would have a capacity to produce a 10 to 15 klpd and without that the sugar industry or their their existing business is not as profitable as what they want it to be they wanted to enter into ethanol but yet they cannot because they, they, the ethanol industry is capital intensive and they cannot set up a bigger plant or they don't have raw materials for the bigger plant so in one shot if i have to say smaller players were not in a position to enter into mainstream supply chain for the ethanol at this moment and this is a vacuum that we observe it's also equivalently uh, a kind of market opportunity for people like us who are into the technology zone as well we wanted to develop technologies so that we can introduce all the small timers into a mainstream supply chain because as 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 our uh, uh, elders say it's only uh, when the country on the whole participates in something it becomes a revolution so ethanol is being treated like a, a revolution in the country currently both by the government as well as the private sectors and for this revolution to be called really as a revolution we need lot of small players also to join the gap uh, to join into the supply so that is what we observed and we started working on it the first major innovation we are bringing with microbike is that we made the capex requirement quite less in comparison to the market requirements and by doing so we were able to encourage small time players also to come into mainstream supply we have achieved the blending targets ahead of our schedule it is a moment to celebrate but also to reflect on the technical and economical challenges that industry players go through in the blending process here mr gora kave believes that india would achieve 20% blending targets in the next 3 years and this would not be the end target we will go on to set and achieve more we have achieved 10% itself is a massive thing because let me be very honest with you 
ट्वेंटी परसेंट ब्लेंडिंग वॉज ओरिजिनली द टारगेट फॉर टू थाउजेंड थर्टी एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैज मेड अ मेजर टू ब्रिंग फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड थर्टी टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव एज अ डेड लाइन एंड अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल एब्रॉड लाइक माई फ्रेंड्स हुआ इन दिमिलर इंडस्ट्रीज वो आर नॉट रियली श्योर वेदर दिस कैन बी मेट और नॉट एंड लेट मी से दैट there were instances when they didn't even believe that it is possible and it was just some kind of number being thrown as a target which is unrealistic but reaching 10% that to 5 5 months ahead of the schedule itself speaks that we are on the right path and we are about to achieve this so it's it's it all starts from the vision you know because um when you have a leadership in the country and the leadership define something and then the machinery under his leadership is following that and making it into a reality that's when a team is called as a successful team and right now uh, the way i see both the stakeholders and the government are like working as a perfect team and we are seeing that in results it is not just it's no more a word that we speak to each other that this is happening that is happening it is visible right now in numbers that we have achieved 10% and we are rightly on the path to achieve 20% in the next 3 years but one thing should also be observed here that e20 would not be a end target for us we would also be going much beyond 20% blending because we are naturally going to be inspired from the consumption patterns abroad where let's say in us as an example we have e85 and e100 as well there are some flex fuel vehicles which consume 100% ethanol blended uh, uh, or they actually consume ethanol only or maybe they have e85 where there is 85% bioethanol and 15% from the gasoline source so um we would be eventually also progressing as a nation towards that mr praveen says that people are thrilled about this initiative his first hand experience in interacting with the supply chain of biofuel is a story of inspiration in itself let's hear that let me put it this way it's it's from my uh, first hand experience i have been uh, interacting with a lot of people who supply cane who manufacture sugar i mean different people in the entire supply chain uh, people are thrilled to have this initiative in fact let me also put it this way that a lot of people beyond the sugar industry or the line of sugar industry are also thrilled because government has made a very right move of allowing other feed stocks also to be uh, used as a raw material for production of ethanol one of it is the grains it's an amazing move because uh, in fact we are also keenly waiting for uh, corn to be included in this because corn also does uh, a lot of um, is also used widely as a as a raw material for the production of ethanol in various other locations of the globe so um one beauty beautiful step in the national biofuel policy is to introduce the alternate raw material sources not just relying on the sugar itself and that has also opened channels for a lot of farmers to be a part a direct part in the national biofuel po- program and uh, people are thrilled to be very honest a lot of people who produce who consume who who convert everyone are thrilled and they are uh, looking at this as a welcoming gesture by the government because it gone were the days when we were only focusing on uh, production of agriculture to be used for the human consumption alone right now we are we are producing surplus but it can be converted into much uh, higher worthy products like it now so that's a very positive move, uh, move by the uh, government that we see evidently in the smiles of lot of people that have met In this discussion Mr Praveen and Mr Madhav shared a lot of insightful information about their startup Microbyte which aims to reduce global carbon emissions save foreign exchange create jobs and contribute to the startup India and make in India movement That is all for today's segment thank you for watching